The meaning of this proverb is, our success does not depend on what kind of tools we have but how we use them. A person may have all the equipments in the world but if he does not know how to use them he can never complete a job successfully. Whereas a person who can make effective use of what is available with him can make a success of any work given to him. The same can be said of real life situations too. We must learn to hone our talents and tabs maximum benefit out of them and not blame destiny or fate when something goes wrong. Kumar and Ravi were two farmers who were neighbors. Both owned a pair of oxen each with which they plowed their land. Kumar worked hard all day long in order to get a good yield and looked after his oxen very well since he knew that they were very important for his farming activity. Ravi on the other hand was a very lazy and a miser who never fed his oxen properly but extracted maximum work from them and kept complaining that they were not doing a good job. As a true friend Kumar advised and pointed out to Ravi that it was cruel to ill-treat the animals which were helping him make a living. Ravi paid little heed to Kumar's words. He soon bought a tractor to plough his land and chased the oxen away since he no longer needed them. Taking pity on the poor animals Kumar took them under his wing although he could ill afford to maintain them. The monsoon soon arrived and it was time for cultivation. Kumar's land was well ploughed and ready for cultivation, thanks to his oxen. Ravi in his miserly fashion had not maintained his tractor well and it kept giving him trouble. With the result, he could not get his land ready for cultivation on time. He lamented and blamed it all on bad luck not realizing that it was he who was responsible for his miserable state. Ravi not only lost out on a good yield by his laziness but also spent more money than required to repair his tractor due to poor maintenance. Despite having better equipment Ravi was unable to get the best results, whereas Kumar was a good workman and hence was able to succeed with the limited resources that he had. This proverb goes to say that anyone who has had a bad experience will be scared and will stay away from things connected to the experience. For example if a child is hurt in a fire accident it will always be scared of going near a flame or fire for life. The bad memories and physical pain will certainly prevent it from going close to anything hot in future. But one has to overcome such mental blocks if one has to progress in life. Once there lived a family of ducks that consisted of Mrs. and Mr. Duck and their six ducklings. The last of the ducklings named Sam was a very active and energetic one. When he was just a few days old he had accidentally fallen into the pond nearby and had almost drowned. Sam had to be rescued by his mother for he was too weak to swim. Ever since then Sam refused to get into the water and while all his brothers and sisters swam around and had fun, Sam would watch from the banks and not go into the pond. No amount of persuasion helped and Sam was happy chasing the butterflies and playing with his friends, baby rabbit and baby tortoise. Mrs. Duck was very worried about Sam and asked his friends the rabbit and tortoise to persuade him to try swimming. But Sam was adamant and refused to go swimming like all the others in the family. One day the three friends were playing around with the wood apple and having a rollicking time. Suddenly baby rabbit tripped and fell into the pond. It did not know how to swim and was struggling to stay afloat. Alarmed on seeing this, baby tortoise quickly slipped into the pond to save baby rabbit. Fear gripped Sam as he quacked loudly calling others for help. But no one seemed to be around. 
Love for his friends overcame his fear of water and without a second thought Sam quickly jumped into the water to lend a helping hand to baby tortoise to pull baby rabbit out of the water. The two of them managed to pull baby rabbit out and heaved a sigh of relief that he was safe. It was only then that Sam realized that he had actually not drowned and had indeed saved his friend's life by swimming excellently. Sam realized that all along his fear of water had been unfounded and he had allowed one bad experience to block his mind. The three friends cried out in joy and danced in celebration. When Mrs. Duck came to know of it she was extremely happy that her son had at last got over his fear of the water. This proverb means that our actions convey more than the words they speak. Here the word speak does not mean literally to speak. It is used to mean convey or show or demonstrate. For example if you are teaching someone how to dance, it is better to show them the movements physically instead of just describing it in words. Actions give a clear picture about what we are trying to say in a short period of time. Here is a small story to illustrate the proverb. Sita was a 10-year-old girl who went to school by bicycle every day. She was a kind-hearted young girl always willing to help people. She was very good at studies and always followed her teacher's advice that one must always lend a helping hand to those in trouble. One morning, as she was on her way to school, she saw a blind man trying to cross the road in the midst of busy traffic. There was no one to help him and he was in danger of getting hurt by the speeding vehicles. Sita, who saw this, parked her cycle in front of a shop and requested the shop owner to look after her cycle, telling him that she was going to help the blind man. Sita ran across to the blind man, took hold of his white cane and told him to walk with her. She waved her hand at all the vehicles, signaling them to stop. All the vehicles stopped and gave way for them to get across. The drivers were touched by the helping move of a small girl who did this small help. The blind man thanked Sita profusely and wished her good luck. Sita's class teacher who was passing by saw this and felt very proud of her student. Sita's gesture towards the blind man clearly showed her good intention to help others who were in need. That day the teacher told the whole class of Sita's helping tendency and asked them to applaud her. She also told the other students that they should follow Sita in converting what they learn into action. Sita was very pleased that she could at least do this small help for a handicapped person. After that Sita became famous among the school students and she was awarded in the school function for her humanitarian gesture. All of us commit mistakes knowingly and unknowingly. When we do it knowingly and hurt others, we must definitely take responsibility for it and face the punishment. When we do that people around us will not consider it as a big crime and will only appreciate our honesty. Thus the intensity of the crime will come down and they will be ready even to pardon us. Raju was a student of class V and was a very naughty boy. Although he was intelligent he always scored low marks in mathematics since he did not like the subject at all. Moreover the maths teacher was very strict lady who beat the children severely if they did not get full marks in their class tests. Many a time Raju was a victim of such harsh treatment and he wanted to teach the teacher a lesson. So one day he decided to play a trick on the lady teacher. He took a rubber scorpion that looked like as good as a live one and placed it in the table knowing fully well that the teacher would open it to take a piece of chalk. 
As he had anticipated the teacher opened the drawer and saw the scorpion and screamed in fright and then fainted. All the students rushed forward to lift the teacher. Hearing the commotion, the headmaster came along and arranged for first aid to be given to the teacher. The headmaster was very angry when he realized that the students had played a prank on the teacher. He demanded to know who had done it. Raju was very scared to own up and so kept quiet. When no student came forward the headmaster decided that all the students should be punished. On hearing this some of the students started crying. Raju felt very bad that his fellow students had to face punishment on account of him and decided to own up to his mistake. Raju told the headmaster that he had played the prank and apologized profusely asking him to spare the other students from punishment. Raju also told the headmaster that he had done it only because he could not bear the beatings of the maths teacher. Although the headmaster was angry with Raju, he was happy that he had spoken the truth. The headmaster asked Raju to apologize to the maths teacher and let him off with the light punishment warning him not to attempt anything similar again. The maths teacher was also called aside by the headmaster and advised not to punish the children so severely in future.